Welcome back to Switch to Linux. So today we're going to do a quick overview of Debian 9 was released. Uh, now this is not a review. Somebody commented on my uh, MX16 video last week saying your review was really bad. Well, it wasn't a review. It was an overview. Uh, an overview, of course, I'm just saying, hey, this is out in case you haven't heard. Um, of course, Debian 9 is so big, you probably have heard about it if you're in the Linux community at all. Uh, but I want to show you some of the, just some of the things about it, the release notes, and uh, then we're going to boot it up. I've installed this on a virtual box. I actually installed three different desktop environments we're going to look at. Uh, one of the cool powers of uh, Debian is you get you can download a uh, net installer, which just comes with the, the core basics, and then uh, you can choose all the software that you want as you um, as you are um, going through. And uh, what I did is I actually picked three different desktop environments. So what is results in that is that my uh, my system will have a whole lot more packages installed than it would be if you just picked one desktop environment because each environment comes with a lot of its own packages. And so we'll talk a little bit about that as, uh, as we uh, log in here. Um, so we're going to start just by having a quick look over at their website. And of course the kitty wants to come up and say hello to everybody. Hello everybody, used to be a nine, it rocks. Um, so Debian is more of a, it, it's a little bit more of an advanced distro. It's not necessarily one for your basic user. Um, and a lot of that as well has to do with its, uh, it's, uh, it's a security focused uh, distro, which is great. And it's also though a distro that, uh, that you can, um, they kind of use it for server installs. In fact, there's uh, just the day after they released uh, Debian 9, they released the notes that uh, for like the education version, which you can deploy across school networks and other networks like that. And so uh, that's really what Debian has a lot of those strengths for is uh, a lot of long-term support. So they use the Firefox ESR for the extended support release rather than just the cutting edge one that most distros are going to use. Um, and so uh, they, they've talked a little bit about that. So um, this is a little over two years in development. Um, and I actually looked at, uh, I think it was the beta release a few months back. Um, and uh, so you can have a look at that. And I did a little bit more comprehensive re um, review and information about it in that video, which I will link here. Um, but uh, nevertheless, this is going to be supported for five years. Um, and of course, it is dedicated to Ian Murdoch, who was uh, the founder of the project, passed away in December of 15. So this is the stretch. Uh, uh, stretch is the code name. Jesse was the old code name. Stretch is the is the new code name. So I'm wondering if we're going to get a stretch version of the Raspberry Pi out soon. Um, and then you'll see Firefox and Thunderbird um, will return. They will replace the Ice Weasel and Ice Dove, uh, which were present before. So in other words, you know they they had Ice Dove was the um, uh, the Thunderbird version and Ice Weasel was the Firefox version, and um, we have the full Thunderbird in here now and the Firefox ESR. And then they're talking a little bit more about some of the security that they've put in here, um, which will allow you to detect uh, tampering with the codes and things. And of course, the X display service no longer requires root privileges to run. This is actually quite important because it means that something on the system does not necessarily have to be running as root to run run things and so that was a, a good uh, a good security move all right let's see what else is in here okay here's uh, UEFI is supported on 32 and 64 bit kernels um, now as far as this you can get the you can see the package list here when I'm going to read through all this but a lot of updated packages um, Pretty much everything here is is the latest current stable releases right now. Uh, so uh, with that, let me see. If you come over here and you just uh, want to get a copy of this to to play with, you can click over here and then um, you can select where you uh, where you're going to get them. Either images, HTTP. You can get CD-ROMs, um, images with BitTorrent. And then uh, just pick the distro that you want. And then here you can come down and you can look at the ones you want. This is the full DVDs 
There's also a place where you can grab, um, I gotta spot where that is again. I never cared for their website. It's just a little, um, it's a little confusing to navigate their website. What I'm looking for is you can download, um, you can download the, the live, oh, here we are, the live images. The live images will allow you to, uh, to play around with the, uh, the system without actually having to install it. Let me see if this is the one. Yep, so you can see all of the various uh, desktop environments. So you can download these. So if you want to try out Cinnamon, GNOME, KDE, LXDE, Mate, or XFCE, um, you can download all of each of those individually to try this out as a live uh, live key. Now, it's important to notice if you're uh, fairly new to Linux and you're um, used to most distros, you download the live key and you can install off of that. Um, in my experience, I tried this just with the Cinnamon Live Key, the installer fails. And um, so keep that in mind that uh, if you are, if you know you want to install it, grab the installation media, not the Live Key media. There is an installer on there. I tried running through the graphical and the non-graphical installer. It failed both times. So keep that in mind. Uh, but you can download these just, just to give them a try. Uh, but what is great is you can pick up the network installer. Okay, Kat, you either need to lay down or go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, what I like getting is the uh, the network installer here. And uh, this one here, I, 190, I think, megabytes or whatever. Um, so I just grabbed the AMD64. Uh, and then what that does is that just boots the system up into the, um, you know, into the, connects the network. Uh, and then it will install everything that it needs from the options that you configure. So that gives you the ability to download any of the desktop environments without downloading the the whole uh, ISO image, which I want to say it was, um, uh, give me a second here, I'm going to have a quick look at the size of this. Okay, so the, the Cinnamon Live ISO for testing was 2.1 gigabytes, but the net installer is 300, uh, 300 megabytes, I should say, not 300 gigabytes, 300 megabytes. So just downloading that, and then it just uses your network connection uh, to install everything else. So what we're gonna do here is, I'm gonna go ahead and boot up the virtual box, and then, um, let's see, We'll go ahead and do this. All right, so here we are um, uh, just loading up here. It does load up pretty quickly. Then we're gonna take us to a login screen. And then like I said, I installed several different, um, I installed several different uh, desktop environments. Uh, I went with the three that I was most familiar with, uh, those being Mate, Cinnamon, and KDE. Of course, KDE is on this computer here. Cinnamon is the computer I'm running right here, and Mate is what I have on my, my media. And so if you do install multiple different desktop environments, once you enter your username and your password, you can come up here to the top, and then you can select which desktop environment you would like. I've never actually gone to the default X session. Um, let me actually do that. I have no idea what's going to happen. This will be an experiment for us all. Um, I did have to install a couple other notes here. Looks like Mate is what it, what that did. Um, so a couple of things about Debian that um, that make it a little bit more complicated. It's not like a real big deal. Uh, but when you install it, your user that you install is not part of the sudo group. So you have to log in as root and add your user to the sudo group if you want to do that. It is very safe to not do that. And again, with Debian being a, um, a security focused uh, group, then that's kind of why they do that is they just wanted to make sure that, that it's not, uh, you know, it, it's not too easy to, to break stuff. And that's one of the downsides is as more Linux distros are becoming more and more and more user friendly, that also means that more and more and more of them can be broken by the user. And Debian, you're not going to like, this is, a, this is one of those good distros you go to hand to somebody to say, here's a distro, I have it set up for you. Um, you know, you would not let have, want them to have to configure it, but you can set it up for them and they're not going to break it because uh, they just can't. <laughs> so, um, 
that's kind of that's kind of the thing here. Now I went through and I um, I added my main user to the sudo group, so I can do administrative things for my main login. And I also oh, you do have to install the guest editions, which I did prior to this. So I had to install uh, make DKMS um, GCC. Uh, maybe something else I forget, and then download the guest editions image, install that, and then mount the CD-ROM, all that fun stuff. Um, so I did all that so that we can have this as full screen, and uh, that's kind of that's kind of what we did. So uh, here we are. I've not really touched anything else, so it's running on the default, uh, all of the default settings. So this is the Mate desktop. And uh, it's just a basic Mate. Um, looks very much, I think it almost looks almost identical to the Ubuntu Mate. I'm not sure what the, the basic Mate would be, as you might call, if there is a generic Mate setup. Um, but we started out with this menu here, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, however, I generally keep it up there. Um, you have four desktop workspaces here. I generally don't use various desktop workspaces. We have a show desktop down here, uh, a clock up here. We have our logout options and, and things like that. And so, um, of course, we can get in here and customize things. Let's go ahead and see what's in the desktop backgrounds. So there's some nice desktop backgrounds there. Hmm, let's see, there we are, there, we'll just do that to say we're on Mate. <laughs> All right, uh, as far as the applications installed, um, like I said, there are going to be a ton more applications in here than you would get if you installed just one desktop environment because some of them, like I installed KDE and KDE comes with its own whole suite of utilities. And so I have all the utilities that would come with Cinnamon and then all the utilities that would come with Mate and then all the utilities that would come with KDE. So you'll see a whole lot more in here and you'll see some redundancy in the applications just due to the fact that uh, each desktop environment is going to bring on its own. So I was thinking of actually doing something like this with this computer so I can switch between different desktop environments as I need to and I can still have my cool KDE picture here um, because this also runs Kodi as another <laughs> desktop environment so it'd be kind of neat to, to do that um, run more desktop environments and then what you would do is you just come in here and you know remove the other applications you wouldn't need so um, in fact if you get in here into your system tools you'll see we have console we have the Mate terminal there's a system monitor here there's a Mate system monitor here there's chaos guard here they're all the same thing <laughs> like all of them are the same um, well, they, they provide for you the same, same information. Um, so of course you don't necessarily need all three of them. Um, but, uh, we get all three of them because this is the one that comes in Mate. This is the one I believe that comes on, uh, KDE. And this is the one that comes on Cinnamon. So I would go ahead and just uninstall, uh, two of these. I don't know. I might, I'm not sure which one. I might keep this one. I like these little graphs and things. Um, so... Um, you'll see that there is a lot of redundancy just because of the fact I have those uh, through. Of course, we have a terminal, we have a root terminal, we have a Mate terminal, we have console. Uh, I'm not sure which one would have come with uh, Cinnamon there. I didn't think it was console. Um, so here we have uh, the basic videos, um, sound juicer for ripping CDs, rhythm box. We have Dragon Player. I don't see VLC, which is neat. Um, here we have our full LibreOffice suite, um, Mate Dictionary. <laughs> Kitty's coming back up. All right. So we have Kmail. We also have Thunderbird on here. Kmail, of course, comes with uh, KDE. Kmail, I like it, but it's complicated to set up. So just have to be careful with, uh, with that. And then let's see, under your internet. Firefox ESR, we have our KDE Connect, which I'd probably uninstall because I don't have an Android anymore. Um, Conqueror web browser as well. Remote desktop view. Okay, we have GIMP, Inkscape, and then a few other applications. Uh, you know, a few different basic, uh, basic image viewers on there, so I'd probably get rid of a few of those. 
lot of games come pre-installed. I found a few of these messed up with my messed up my uh, display, but um, you can see the various games we have. And then here's your accessories. Cat, what are you doing? The cat is being crazy. He's just like, yeah, I'm chilling, yo. I'm chilling. But I feel like he's going to fall over if I don't. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> okay. Um, so here on Mate, of course, um, you know, I have details in other places about how you can add things to your Mate desktop. But that's what Mate gets us. Um, so let's see if I can remember how to log out of Mate. So we're going to log out. And then we're going to come in and we will go into one of the other ones. I have, um, okay. Okay, so here we are in our cinnamon. That one's very bright. I did not realize how bright that, uh, how bright that background is. I'm going to get rid of that because that thing's way bright. Change desktop background. So uh, we it looks like uh, it looks like each one of the folders, each one of the desktop environments is going to come with a lot of its own um, its own backgrounds. This one here does seem a little bit more of a sluggish environment. Um, and in fact, it seems to be kind of frozen a little bit right there. Uh, okay, well, we'll stick with that one, I guess, because, well, it is. I just want to see if I can find uh, my Cinnamon version here. So Cinnamon version 3.2.7, I totally forget what, uh, what the current is. I forgot to look that up. <clears throat> prior to starting. Um, of course, Cinnamon doesn't run quite as well in virtual boxes, but you can see, um, you know, you have your, your basic Cinnamon desktop here. Um, uh, nothing really special about it. Um, all the applications, of course, are the same. We can uh, change around our themes here. Here's your icons, buttons, controllers. Let's see what our desktop themes are. Submarine, let's see that one. All right. Here's your various controls. Yeah, not sure I like that uh, that background. It's just a little. It's a little too dark. There you go. That's not too dark. That's not bad. Yeah, you can see that. Uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, what exactly it's due to, but my cinnamon is is very sluggish. I don't actually recall it being the sluggish when I was first experimenting with it, but it is being very sluggish right now. I am not sure why. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the KDE. I guess plasma. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting, um, I'm getting some, uh, I, you know what, I've actually, I've seen this before. If you're running multiple different desktop environments, that the, the first one that you log into can cause some challenges. And so I'm going to, I'm going to uh, shut down the, the computer and, and restart it. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that.
Yeah, it, it was, uh, in my initial test, it was running perfectly fine. I didn't encounter any of the sluggishness at all. Um, we're just going to force it to shut down. All right, let's start that guy back up. I'm trying to think if I did anything, if I had installed anything that uh, might explain sluggishness. Yeah, if you notice, uh, our entire application launcher is not loading up all of a sudden. Uh, I am not sure why that is the case. Uh, come on. I'm just going to try changing the desktop theme around. Yeah, I don't know what. It's, uh, it was working just fine before. Um, I was in here messing around with things and now I'm getting all sorts of junk. No clue. No clue. Widgets. Come on, system settings. It's kind of like, you know, I had all, all wonderful plans to talk about how great this was running, but this is not running well right now. I have no idea what, what is wrong with this. going to log out actually. Let me go back to Mate. Mate seems to be working just fine. Okay, so yeah, I mean Mate's working great <laughs> and very fast and you know very responsive. Log out. Log out. See, if you saw down there at the bottom, uh, it it uh, it gave me the window, and then it kind of vanished on me. I'm not sure why. Um, it could have something to do with the fact that I'm recording video, although I can't imagine what that would do. Except I'm getting these these display issues. And let me. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of display display issues as you can see. I'm not sure if that's because I'm recording video at the same time here or not, but uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop recording the video and come back in for a second go here. Alright, so uh, after I shut everything down, I, uh, you know, I even turned off OBS so that nothing was uh, else was running and I tried to run it and the entire system just became completely unstable for me. Um, so I'm not about to say under any circumstance that the Debian 9 is not going to be stable. Um, it could be any number of, uh, of a variety of things. Uh, causing that issue from, uh, you know, the fact I have too much stuff on there, or maybe the um, uh, the system is is just not able to run um, run that many, you know, environment. I don't know. I, I'm not sure what the issue is exactly. Um, 
it was working very good before I uh, turned on the camera the first time. Um, but after this, I, I mean, I tried to log in to each one of them individually. What I think I want to do is probably just um, log in and do uh, just do some updates. So what I am noticing, I mean, if, if you are kind of indifferent on your desktop environment and you do want to run this, it seems as though Mate is still running perfectly fine. Cinnamon running but sluggish. KDE not running at all for me right now. I mean, I can't even get the computer to shut down if I'm running KDE. Um, can't do anything on it. So I think what I want to do is um, uh, I want to see if there's any any updates to do. And then um, from there, I want to uh, see if this doesn't become a little bit more stable. Or uh, even better is I might install this on an actual hard drive uh, so that I'm not running, um, running this system with three different desktop environments on a virtual box. Um, I didn't envision that that would be the problem here, uh, but uh, I'm just not exactly sure what to label the, the issue. It's just that um, uh, right now, uh, right now it runs on Mate, it's not running on anything else. So I'm just gonna try one more time, booting into Plasma here. Like it'll get, it'll start out all right, and then um, I'll get the, um, I'll get my uh, taskbar down there at first, and then as soon as the connection comes up, the taskbar disappears. It's still kind of there, um, but then the entire system, like right now, the entire system is completely unresponsive. Um, no idea why. Uh, let me, I'm going to change the virtual screen to a different size. Yeah, I can't get, uh, I can't get console to run. I can't get uh, anything on the system to run. So it's just, just has to be forced power down. So as of right now, my Debian 9 is KDE, won't run at all. Um, Mate runs great. Cinnamon is running sluggish. And so I don't know. Those that's kind of that's kind of it. O overall, it's a great distro. It's a little bit more advanced. Um, it is for the security conscious person. You do need to do a few different steps to set it up right. And probably if you want to try it, don't run three desktop environments on top of it. <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. Is hey, I threw three desktops there, uh, desktop environments there, and uh, maybe that's uh, what's becoming the the issue. Although you know, there's um, there's a lot of people who do that a lot without having any issues, but. Um, um, eh, whatever, uh, take that for what it is. Um, my overall take again, Debian is, uh, is a great distro to run for a lot of different reasons. Um, of course it's one of those granddaddies of the Linux community. Um, in this instance, this environment, I seem to be having some issues. So I think what I might do here when I get a chance is, uh, try and install it on another hard drive and, uh, see what I, uh, see what I get. Um, See if it's something that I can become, you know, become more stable as I, as I run more, uh, more information. So regardless, um, quick overview of Debian nine. I'm not sure how quick it was, but uh, you know, it is out. It is a nice system, and um, if you are going to try it out, pick one desktop environment. I bet that that's that was my downfall, is my my thought. So with that, uh, thanks for watching uh, this video here, and if you would like to help. To support the channel, we are on Patreon. Uh, we did find out that you can't search Tom M. For whatever reason, the URL is not included in the Patreon search. So you have to type my full name, Tom Morosky, in there. But if you do patreon.com forward slash Tom M, you will find me there. Uh, there are also Amazon links below. And with that, I will say thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.